everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and that's Christian and we're here to talk about and rank our, the second season of Creep Show. So if you want to hear our thoughts and what we thought were the best of the best in Creep Show of season two, stick around. So overall thoughts on the season. Overall thoughts on the season. I thought it was a very good season. Um, It felt awful short. It felt incredibly short. Partially because, you know, the world we're in currently. Partially because... Uh, yeah, there was a segment cut from the season that featured one Marilyn Manson, but, uh, he's a piece of shit. Allegedly. So he, yeah, he's an alleged piece of shit. Don't, don't sue, sue us. us. Um, so, we, we, uh, so that segment got cut, which is probably why our last episode of the season's a full, uh, it takes up a, a full thing and doesn't have a second half of a story. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like, it was, so, yeah, that, that, this is definitely a season that I feel like... Came on, it came through even though they had to make a lot of compromises and struggle in order to get it out. Yeah, not to mention just the pandemic. Yeah, already. yeah. That's always fun. Um, also, we're not going to be including in our ranking the Halloween or the Christmas episode. Both of those episodes are awesome, and we have done videos on them, so if you want to hear our thoughts on that and check it out, you they're somewhere. Yeah, but in technically YouTube they're not officially part of season two. So, yeah. So, with all that out of the way, let's get down to it. And I'd like to say... With the overall thoughts that this that there's really not even no. like my lowest up ranked uh, episode. It's not a bad episode. It's still worth you know. It's it's still worth checking out. You know there are some are better than others. That's gonna be obvious. But still, it's not a bad episode. It's not like the worst thing you're ever gonna see. Let, let me put it to you this way: the lowest I would say for an uh, for an episode of the, of season two, I would say is like a B. Whereas, like, for tomorrow's ranking with Masters of Horror Season 2, it's like a, a C or a D, even. Oh. Uh, th this doesn't have the absolute lows. There's really not a full-on bad episode. I, the, quality. The worst episode of the season I would still call pretty decent quality and pretty high quality for any other anthology series, you mm -hmm. know? I would agree with all that. So with all that out of the way, we're going to get right into it and rank them. And there are nine episodes, so for my number nine, mine is Night of the Living Late Show. Why? Okay, yeah, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, the Night of the Living Late Show. So, um, again, in this one, probably I'm giving it a little bit of a pass because like it, it's the last episode of the season, and it's it's long, and it it, it just didn't feel like it was it was too long for me. It was too long. I get that. I totally get that. It, Justin Long is in this, mm -hmm. and it's real good. And you mentioned it when we reviewed it that um, that they didn't go to their full potential. My problem with the episode is I wish they would have gone to their with their fully fledged in the premise where because we had the whole the cool it's a cool premise you know dude tell transporting himself into like public domain horror films that's a fun premise the problem is they only do it they only go into two movies mm -hmm. you know you could have done a lot more and i definitely feel like especially now knowing yeah that was probably the episode that was that, that got expanded because they had to cut the manson segment uh probably they didn't have time to rewrite it and i feel like if they did they probably would have it might have been a real high one mm -hmm. they, pro they probably could have expanded because it, it very much the everything that happens feels like it could be fit into a normal size segment and they just stretch it out mm -hmm. where as so yeah I kind of do feel like yeah they probably maybe should have rewritten it a little bit too just because I get it I totally get why not but especially since the Manson thing happened relatively late into production season was basically done so there we go. What about your number nine? Mine is a episode that I you would think I would have been all about because I'm a big Lovecraft guy. Really? But for something about uh, Within the Walls of Madness just didn't do it for me. It, again, it's still pretty high quality. It's still a fun segment. I'd say worth checking out, especially if you're a Lovecraft fan. It's really damn cool to see Denise Crosby in something again. Um, it, it, it has a, It's one of those things where it's... I've seen everything this segment's done better elsewhere. I, I've seen the whole isolating, you know, paranoia thing. You've done better in The Thing. I've seen all the Lovecraft stuff been done better in any, in any Stuart Gordon movie. I've seen Denise Crosby in, a, in better horror films. Like and Pets Star and, Trek. And also, I guess she was in Star Trek, evidently. <laughs> um, but it's still a very fun, solid little segment. I like the I like the kind of whodunit aspect of it, of wondering about the whole thing of, is he a serial killer, or did something actually go down? You know, I like all that stuff. Denise Crosby is delightful in the thing, and it has some cool ideas in it. Just, it's one of those ones are, yeah, I've seen this all done better elsewhere, but it's still fun. Still a solid episode. 
Okay, for my number eight, and I have a feeling you're not going to like my number eight. My number eight is Television of the Dead. No! I know, I know. I knew you loved this one. You've done my boy or Sam Raimi wrong. I love Sam Raimi. He's darling in this. Uh, it's a cute uh, It's a cute one, but this one, I'm going to be honest, it's, not, it's one that doesn't retain in my brain for very long. I had to, when I was looking over the list, I was like, oh yeah. If you took out Sam Raimi, I don't think I would remember I would remember. I remember. I would remember Bob Ross. Okay. And also the fucking Mr. Rogers lady that was basically you. I, I can see that. It, it's a fun episode, but for whatever reason, it didn't stick. And by the way, I should have said this sooner. These are just our opinions. Mm. No hate if we're picking on a favorite episode of yours. This is just this fun little thing. And again, we like, we like all the segments of the season two. Yeah, we do. These are all still, even though they're at the bottom of the barrel, they're still worth checking out. They're still, this is a, this was overall a really good season. And even the lower ones are still pretty damn good. Absolutely, absolutely. So, with all that, what about your number eight? Pesticides. Fuck this segment. There's giant spiders in it. I hate spiders. Fuck this segment. How dare Greg? I knew this was fucking happening. He's been teasing that spider puppet all fucking year. I hate that spider puppet. It should have just been about Dave, Keith David playing the devil, drinking a mojito or something. I fucking hate that spider puppet. Fuck that spider. I showed him, of all the movies I ever showed him when he was younger, it, I never thought Arachnophobia would be the, the one that took me up, it. Dude. That it, movie it, fucked me up, dude. That's the one that fucked, of all the movies I ever showed him, and I wasn't like sadistic and going, here little boy, I'm trying to find something that's going to give him permanent phobias of things. For I never thought, I thought, oh, this is a cute movie, John Goodman, he'll love it. Fucking spiders. He still checks I his fucking shoes hate spiders. every morning. I fucking hate spiders. Segment itself is fine, but I fucking it's bad because there's a spider in it. I get that. Uh, yeah, but but it, I, fun episode. I thought it was rather cute. Uh, for my number seven, it would be Within the Walls of Madness, which is kind of surprising because I'm not the You're Lovecraft. Not a Lovecraft fan. I would have figured I would have had it higher. But. I'm I'm not the Lovecraft, but I, what I like about the uh, Denise Crosby, it was. I'm not gonna lie. She was a delight to see. I, it's been a forever and a day that I've seen her in anything. And much like uh, Barbara Crampton, she's aged very lovely herself. And I think it's a fun story. And I like how we don't know. If if the guy's actually crazy or a, and a killer, or if he's actually got onto something, I thought it was pretty fun. Probably if I was like Christian, I'm not as well versed in the Lovecraft, so it was fresher to me than it probably yeah, was. Yeah, I, I think maybe you're right because it's a lot fresher of an idea. Everything in that thing is stuff I've seen done a in a hundred Lovecraft stories and a hundred Lovecraft knockoffs. I get that. I get that. But for me, it was very fresh, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Okay, next one for me is Late Show of the Living Dead. It's a fun, like I said, I wish they would have gone further with their premise. I definitely think if it, it, it's one of those ones where if it wasn't, if it was a regular length segment, I would probably like it a lot more because I would understand, okay, time constraint, but since it's a like 40 minute sh uh, segment as opposed to like a 20 minute one, I feel like there's so much squandered potential in here. It's really fun to see Justin Long playing this character. You can tell he's having a blast doing this. Uh, the premise is really neat. It just, I wish they would have done more with it. I get that. I get that. It was lower for me, but I could understand it. For We're already on to number six, and for my number six, and the reason why this one, it's a good episode. It's fun, but I'm going to be honest with you. What well, The only thing that really made this episode stand out was the wonderful performance by Barbara Crampton. She is darling in she this, and that would terrific. be Pipe Screams. She plays the mega bitch Karen, just, I mean, dr and she's a drunken mega bitch Karen in mm -hmm. this, and she's delightful to watch. But this, and, and it, it's very sweet because she does her role to perfection, the just desserts at the end of it really make it the uh, the the episode sweet. Mm -hmm. But this is a pretty standard episode. This was a very Twilight Zoney episode, a little bit, yeah. The crypt episode, yeah, very more tales from the crypt. Very good episode, very fun. But really, this would be just a meh episode. But it's the performance that makes it shine, Barbara. But I probably wouldn't remember this one as well if it weren't for Barbara Crampton. I totally get that. It's also my uh, it's also my next one. It's fun. The best part of this segment is just watching uh, Barbara Crampton playing so off type and just playing this fucking colossal bitch. It's so goddamn fun and enjoyable. You can tell she's having fun playing against her usual type. She's aged beautifully. Mm, yeah, she's great in it. The effects are really fun. I, I, I like everything around it. The story is decent, but I'll kind of like you. It'd be a lot less memorable if it wasn't for Barbara Crampton. I would agree with that. We're on to our number five, and for my number five, it would be Pesticide. Keith David, people. Keith David. I do... He's the devil! He's the he's devil! He's the devil! He 
she's so charming in this. And you got a big arachnid. I'm a big arachnid. Yeah, it's cool. Ooga booga. <laughs> and it was fun watching it with this with this kid. It's a lot of fun, but really Keith David does make it like amazing. Mm -hmm. My number five is Dead and Breakfast, aka the story of Jen and Christian running a bed and breakfast. <laughs> um, it's it yeah. Yeah, I know we made that joke in the review, but it's fucking true. This we would totally do this. Yeah. It, um yeah, it, I, I, it's it's one of the more just really it's just an enter, a really entertaining simple story. Like it doesn't need to go too it doesn't need to go overboard with anything convoluted. It's just a simple fun little tongue in cheek horror story and I really like it. I, I also really like our um, like true crime investigator character. Mm -hmm. It's a fun little kind of poking fun at like the true crime part of YouTube while still, you know, having respect for him and just more like it's a little weird how into this you guys are, but cool good on for you. <laughs> you know, I, I I like all that. Also the brother is just me. Yeah. It is just that's yeah. And the sister's kinda me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because my number four happens to be Dead and Breakfast. Ooh. I um, I really like this one too. I, yeah, pretty much what Christian said. Um, we, we would definitely probably, th that would, if we weren't YouTubers, we would probably be running a Dead and Breakfast. We just have to get some people to kill, to kill, and then we could have it. Could all be ours. I could, I could like make people breakfast, complimentary breakfasts. You can't cook. I can't cook. Well, I could, I could dump a bowl of cornflakes and some milk. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> Hi, welcome. I, I, I'm pretty sure we should never run an Airbnb at this point. I think that would be fun, but yeah, the, this and I like the YouTuber girl that 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 does this. I think it's it's anytime they show YouTubers, you always get a kick mm, out of that. Yeah, so that's fun. it's just a fun episode. It's it, that's all it is. It's just a fun episode, and again, an, another one where the comeuppance is really sweet mm, at it. Mm -hmm, so very totally. cool. Okay, my next one is fucking. I love sibling rivalry. It is probably the most just. It is the second most f uh, like f comedy wise. It's probably the second funniest of the season. It is the humor is very quick paced, very witty, very just uh, very enjoyable. The actors are all really damn fun. The brother and sister always surprise me with how great a chemistry they feel. They feel like actual siblings, which fucking is great for the storytelling. Plus Molly Ringwald's in it, and she's having a blast in the episode. Yeah, I would agree with you because that happens to be my number three. Mm. Molly Ringwald is amazing in this. Oh, and I, I had heard that she was going to be in an episode and, uh, before we ever got to see any of uh, the show, and I was like, ooh, Molly Ringwald, because I'm an 80s baby. Um, it's just a really cool one. It's, it's a fun vampire story. It is like the effect, like the effect. It's one of those ones where like the effects. Is, it, it surprises you of how good the effects are at the end too. Mm -hmm. Like at least for me. And I like how it's how it's non sequenced. How we're telling the story, you know, front back to front. Mm -hmm, yeah. I, I like that. It, it, it's pretty. You know, if you've seen this sort of stuff, you probably kind of catch up to it. But it's still fun. And Molly, did I mention Molly Greenwald was a delight? And the brother and sister do have a really good uh, chemistry. They really are believable, and uh, you can always tell it. You can you can fake it, but you can tell the authenticness of it and they Absolutely. really have that authentic feel to them so what is your number three my number three is the best the best twilight zone thing to come out since probably the 60s uh the right stuff the right stuff is the right so stuff baby uh, love the way you turn me on you're done <laughs> New you know, kids. You know that song. You know, now you think about that song, kind of creepy considering it's being sung by preteens. That's kind of a creepy song. Isn't Joe it? was always my favorite. That's nice. <laughs> um, anyway, the right stuff. As it's, it's a really damn fun sci-fi story. Like it's really damn cool. I love the twist at the end. I, I love the whole like final like 20 like final like five minutes of the segment. It's the, it's all really damn good. It's really cool to see Breck and Meyer in something again. I haven't seen that dude in anything besides like Robot Chicken occasionally. Um, yeah and like I said it's the best Twilight. It's the most Twilight zone it thing is. to come out since at least uh, since at least like the 1980s. I get that. I get that. It is a really good episode. Mm -hmm. uh, for my number two we're already down to number two kids. It is Model kid and that was the first episode of this season and I this one there's always an anthology there's usually always one that has a little bit more heart there's usually a funny one there's one that's gross then there's usually one with a heart and this one has heart to me this one really has heart it's about a kid and he kind of gets an abusive uncle and 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 you feel really bad for this kid and this kid is kind of all us yes this kid is like you know you know a weirdo likes horror all that stuff and he get not not the 
excuse isn't super heavy, but the show lets you know what's going on, and that that what makes the payoff so good. Mm -hmm. And I think this one, I love this one. This one sticks out to me because it really has a lot of heart, and I really enjoyed it. And because we're there, you know, we're emotionally there with the kid. The the just desserts that the asshole uncle gets, it really makes it sweet. Totally, totally. Yeah. And it's not done in a corny way or a sugary way. It's just in a very satisfying way. I get way. that. It's also my number two. I love this segment. It's really goddamn fun. And wholesome fucking... Wholesome as fuck, man. <laughs> wholesome wholesome as, fuck. as fuck horror content for the whole family. <laughs> it's super sweet. It's super wholesome. Everyone gives a really damn fun performance. It's It has some of my favorite effects of the whole season. I love I love the design Nicotero gave for the Frankenstein monster. I think it's a really cool design. I love the whole story of it. I like how we're, I like how we're set in the 70s and it kind of does have a very strong 70s feel to it. I like I really love the hell out of this and fucking wholesome as fuck. It is. It's it's wholesome as fuck family content if you're the right family. Yeah. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so that leaves us with our number one. And for my number one, it is The Right Stuff. Which that surprises me considering you're not a sci-fi fan. It surprises me too. But this one, I get like you said, this one really reminded me of some Twilight Zone episodes. Brecken Meyer is a lot of fun. I don't know. I just had a good time with this episode, which I'm not a sci-fi girl, so go figure. But for whatever reason, this one was fun. And I liked, I think what got me was the ending. Because yeah. that ending was really really cool how they did that. Yeah, probably the best ending of the whole season. Yeah, I, I'm a sucker for a good ending, and this one just had a really good ending, and it's kind of very true to how man's nature and character are. Totally, totally. So, yeah, and it's like, whoa. That's some heady <laughs> concepts there, man. It, rem it remind and, and again, and, I, and, and it reminded me, and it's not, and I, when I say reminded, I'm not, I'm not saying it ripped off, but I just got really strong Twilight Zone vibes, and that's never a bad no, thing. No, especially it's, when it's like, you know, no good Twilight Zone. Yeah, when it's done right, it's just it just was like, yeah, I'm vibing with you. I'm vibing with you. What's your number one? My number with? one. If you couldn't fucking guess, I said at the beginning of the season, this was my new favorite segment from the whole series, and it's still true. Public television of the dead. Fucking. I'll, well, how can I put this other than my favorite moment and I think what and I think it will stay this way for all year my favorite moment in all of horror this year is gonna be that fucking scene of the Antiques Roadshow fucking guy sitting there and saying hello I'm going to be talking to my guest here Mr. Ted Raimi what do you have here for us that whole scene is one of the f had me on the floor. That is one of the funniest as an Evil Dead fan. That had me one of the funniest fucking things I've seen in a long time. It's probably my favorite th horror thing all year. I love the hell out of it. I love our fucking like m psycho Mister Mister Rogers parody. That's just you. It's just <laughs> you. Um, I love our fucking like World War fucking like Vietnam vet mi uh, Bob Ross p uh, parody. I love everything about this. It has the fu it has. All, it, it feels like like a, one of the best episodes of Ash vs. Evil Dead. It, it feels like you said a, that in the review. Yeah, it feels like one of the better episodes of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Because as much as I love that show, there were a few po episodes of that where I was like, this really doesn't feel like Evil Dead at all. But I'm still vibing with it. Whereas this just this just feels like like I know T Sam Raimi didn't make it, but god damn it, I, you could tell me he did, and I would totally believe you. It feels like something Raimi would make. Mm -hmm. It does. It totally does. If my thing with it is. I just wouldn't remember it with except See, I remember pretty much everything in the episode. I, I remember I remember pretty much all the dialogue. I get that. So that was our top 9 list of the best uh, the list from the worst to best and even the worst were pretty damn good. Yeah. So uh yeah, and as always Boos and Ghouls, thank you so much for watching. Leave us comments down what at the bottom. What is your ranking of the season if yeah. you watched it? What's your ranking? What was or even just which was your favorite or have you gotten around to see it? If you haven't yet, shame on you. Get a, get to watch it. It is on Shudder. It is one of the wonderful reasons why we love Shudder. You this could watch all the whole season in like a night. Yeah, you could. And they're real. And even like I said, even the lowest ranked one is still pretty damn good, which mm -hmm. says something about the.
the show. We now, the sucky part is waiting for season three. God <sighs> damn it. Well, we'll probably get another holiday special or two. I hope so. I hope so, because we need something to kind of keep us at bay for till we get season three. But yeah, that's the only sucky part is now that it's over, we gotta wait, and I suck at waiting. I really suck at waiting. You do suck at waiting. So with all that out of the way, booze and ghouls, please leave your comments below. Tell us what your favorite episode is or what your ranking is. We always love to hear it. And as always, booze and ghouls, we hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have and you're new around here, please hit that subscriber button because we do appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Creep show. Creep, creep, creep show. It's the right stuff. Baby, it always turns me on. <laughs> Bye, guys. Ah! Ow! I can't.